Hey everyone, welcome back. And today I'm going to be showing you how to use Replit to actually build an application. Now, it's a great tool for those who are technical because you can use prompts using your developer knowledge to actually build the app in a better fashion. However, if you're non-technical, you can also build these applications and it's absolutely incredible what you can do in a little bit of time. Today's video, in about 15 minutes, we end up building an entire to-do app that includes a front-end, API, back-end persistence into a Postgres database. It's essentially a full-stack app that's ready to go. Now, it's nothing too sophisticated, but it does give you an idea of exactly what you can do with these platforms. Let's get started. Okay, so to start with Replit, you're going to want to go to replit.com, sign up for an account, and then you're going to be pushed into this home screen. This is where all the magic happens within this platform. Now, you can also run Replit on mobile, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then you're also able to run it on desktop as well. However, from an accessibility perspective, if you're just trying this out, this is a super simple way to do this, and you're going to see why it's so powerful very quickly here. Now, what we're going to do is build that to-do app. And that to-do app is going to be built based on this particular prompt that I built out. Now, am I a prompt engineering expert? No. Will this work to get us in the right spot? Yes. If there are improvements that I can make, please put it in the comments down below. So it says, hi, Matt, what do you want to make? Well, we're going to build a to-do app that will have the following features. First, we'll have a home screen where all to-dos can be seen in a list form. Then each to-do will have the ability to mark it as complete in a checkbox that will be located on the left-hand side of the to-do entry. Is that the best English? No but it should work for us. Then we have the ability to be able to delete the to-do by clicking a delete icon on the right side of the to-do entry in the list. There will also be an add to-do screen that will appear when the user clicks the add to-do button in the bottom right of the home screen. Now, how did I come up with this app? I try to think about all the to-do apps I've built in the past and then visualize it and then put that into the prompt. That's the beauty of this. You could come up with an idea really describe it well here, and then iterate on it. And we're gonna iterate on this as we go along. Then the fields the to-do will contain include a name, a due date, and completed, and I put Boolean field. At the bottom of the add to-do screen, there'll be an add button that when clicked will add the to-do to the main list on the home screen. Now, I have nothing in here about persisting data. We'll get to that in a moment. This should, though, give us the scaffolding to initially build the app. So I'm going to click Start Building. And then Replit is going to do its thing here. It's going to go through, generate the code that we need in order to make this functionality happen. Now, it doesn't always happen perfectly on the first try. As with all these tools, it does take some iteration. But it's going to get us very close, and we're going to be able to build something very, very quickly. So it's telling me what its plan is. I'll help you create a to-do application with all the requested features. The plan includes a clean modern interface with to-do list management and a form for adding new to-dos. Would you like to proceed with the implementation? Yes, let's build the initial prototype. Or we can also add these additional features and it's suggesting these. Add categories, tags for to-dos, implement sorting and filtering, add due date notifications. Let's actually pick implement sorting and filtering because this is something that would be super useful for us. Why is this important? Well, this is giving us kind of that ability to see ahead and maybe put stuff into the app that it thinks would be a good fit. So let's do approve plan and start. And let's see what it comes up with here. You can see that it's generating code. The nice part is that even if you don't really know what this code is doing, so let's say you're less technical, that's all right. It, we can actually do this without really knowing what the code's doing. And I think that's the beauty of Replit is that you can just prompt, see what happens, and everything happens within kind of this enclosed IDE. Now there's a few things to remember as it's generating this code. Although there is, you know, best practices usually put into place, as we iterate more and more, and if you've used other tools like let's say Copilot, you may have realized that sometimes it puts in a less than optimal code, sometimes it puts in security vulnerabilities. You kind of still have to have an eye for that type of stuff and there's tons of tools out there, I think, that will come in to this development lifecycle, like tools like SAST tools and DAST tools to help 
with making sure that the code that's produced is in fact you know, working correctly and is secure. So you can see here that it took a screenshot. This is my base app here. You can see that I have a plus in the corner here. Now the agent itself is asking me, please verify if you can see the to-do list app and perform basic operations. View the list of to-dos, add a to-do, mark a to-do as complete, and delete a to-do. I have a plus button, which I'm gonna click. We can enter a name for our to-do. We can have a due date, which look, it even put in a date picker for us. Let's do 12th. And then I can click add to-do. And it pops up here on our main screen. Plus you can see a little toast message in the corner. We built this just with that single prompt. Um, this is, to me, it may not be super impressive to senior devs like, hey, I could put that together in a matter of, you know, 20 minutes or maybe five minutes. But think about the infrastructure we have in the background here. We built a entire front end application just with a single prompt and we built it in like, what, a minute? Super impressive. I think this is gonna change the game for folks that are less technical, especially. Now let's add one more. Call it test to do two. We'll make that due date the 11th. And then I'll click add to do. We have two of these here. Now, when I'm done them, I wanna be able to check them off. And it works. I also wanted the ability to be able to delete these. Click delete. There we go. So this is pretty cool how we built this so quickly. Now, let's just check, does this have a database attached to it? You can see here that it's actually generating some stuff. So I asked this question, it came back with no, currently the app is using in-memory storage solution, mem storage uh, class in server slash storage.ts. So essentially it's just gonna get cleared as soon as the session is done. But it can add a Postgres database to persist the to-dos. And you can see that it instantly started doing that. So created a Postgres SQL database, edited server storage.ts. Then it says, I see that we need to push the schema to the database, but the command failed. Let me use the proper workflow to restart and execute the database push. Restart application, took a screenshot. I'll help you push the schema to the database and fix the current error. Let me use the SQL tool to create the table directly since we can't run NPM commands. So you can see that it's it's iterating. And this is that cool part about agents that is so different than just using you know, a code generation tool. The agent itself is able to iterate and figure out if it did something right, if it did something wrong. And these agents are consistently getting smarter and smarter at this stuff. Now, here we can see, I've set up a Postgres SQL database and created the to-dos table. Can you verify if you can create and manage to-dos now, the data should persist even if you refresh the page. Let's try it out here. Test to-do one. We'll change this to the 11th and add to-do. Now let's add another one here. Get rid of this toast message. We have test to-do two. Change this to the 10th there, add to-do. They're both there. Now, the cool part is, is that we can actually see what's going on here. Is it actually writing to the database? I like to make sure that I confirm that, which is what I would do if I were actually developing this app. I would go into the database, check to make sure that those entries were written. And here, if we click on this Postgres database tab, like I just did, we can then come into my data. And right here, we can see that it's being persisted into the to do's table. Test to do one test to do two, it's giving it an ID, it has a due date, and it's checking if it's completed. Now, if I come back here, and let's just say I check to do two off the list, this should then persist that into the database. And I'll need to do a refresh, which is over here, and look at that, completed true. Why is this important for non-technical folks? Well, usually in order to wire up a database, it takes a fair amount of lift. You're gonna to have to deploy the database, you're gonna to have to create a schema, you're then gonna to have to create some type of data access objects or use some type of ORM. There's talent 
and skill that's needed to do that effectively and make it work right. We just did that with a couple of clicks. Actually, the agent did it when we asked it. So it knew that we were going to ask that as a next step. Now let's verify, yes, this is working. Now there's one more thing that I want us to do here, which is we need to be able to click on a to-do entry and then edit that to-do entry. And you can see here that it's asking us, add a new to-do, refresh the page, see if it's still there, mark it as complete, and then delete it. Let's just add one more, do the test as it's asking us to do. So we'll call it test to-do three. March 6th is fine. Added. Again, let's just check the database. We see test to do three is there. Then we'll delete it. We'll do as it asked to refresh the page. And then let's check the database as well. And we see that it's been deleted. So now let's go ahead with actually adding that functionality. I also want to be able to, and again, we want to make sure that we're descriptive. After it has been added to the main list, add an edit icon beside the delete icon in the entry and make it so that users can update their entry and save the update to the database. And then we'll ship that off and see what it comes back with. I'll come back over to progress here. Should be able to see what's happening. I'll add the ability to edit to do's by adding an edit icon and implementing the update functionality on both front end and back end. In storage, you can see that it added an update to do function. You can also see that code. You can see it's adding a route. So we have a completely separate API here that is built. And that is really the cool part about these tools is that they're, they're building, and again, time will tell us if this is really true, but it seems like these tools are building based on best practices of separating front end from back end and really building it the way that we would as developers. Of course, with any AI stuff like this, it's gonna to continue to get better and better. And right now it's not perfect, but think about how long it would take for us to include this functionality in our app. It likely, by the time we build the front end out, build the back end, and then do anything we need to do in the database, it's gonna take us some time. We're only a few minutes in here and we've already built a potentially fully functional app here that we can begin to use. All right, so I took a screenshot here. And if we bring this back up, we see test to do one and it's March 10th. And you can see the name here, click edit. Oh, look at that. It looks a little different than our other intake form or our add to do form, but that's okay. We'll change this to to do four and we'll change it from the 10th to the seventh and I'll click save changes. Hmm. Doesn't look like it persisted our date here. So let's try this one more time. Change the name, but it didn't persist the date. Let's do eighth save. It's off by one day. So date. I updated the to do with is off by one day. Selected the edit screen matches. The date persisted to the database. Now it's running through. It's going to hopefully fix this for us and then it's going to be working. And I like the fact that it puts in these kind of nice to haves, like, you know, if we look, we, we saw a little toast message in the right side corner. It's really, really neat to see that it adds those touches in and you can get rid of that stuff as well. You can just say, Hey, I don't want this toast message. You'll get rid of it. 
but most of the time it does a pretty good job of adding in things it thinks you'll need. Let's try this again. So we got March 7th here. Let's do March 20th. Save changes. It's still off by a day. Select Mark 20. It saves as Mark 19. Again, we could go into the code and figure this out, but the beauty is, is that we don't necessarily have to. And with some of this generated code, you don't necessarily have to know the code base in order to build, so that for when you're troubleshooting this code, it becomes significantly harder because you have to then understand how the code base is working. I think long term, this is going to cause some issues with large projects that are built this way because you're going to have folks that don't understand what's really going on with the application. But for building stuff like this, I think it works great. I think if you're building a simple back office application, if you're building some type of simple web app, it's awesome to be able to throw this together really, really quickly. If you're building some like enterprise level SaaS product, you know, uh, I think it's yet to be seen if folks have done that yet. If you have started to do that, uh, I'd love to hear all about it. Now it's making some changes here. Let's see, you can actually, if you read through the progress, it'll tell you exactly what it's doing, which is quite neat. Take a screenshot. It doesn't look like it's quite rendering correctly in the screenshot, but let's see what it comes back with. Let's see here. Okay, so let's do our edit again. Change this to the eight. Save changes. <laughs> it's still doing. Let, let's let's try something here because now I'm curious. If I do add test to do, we'll call it six, and I'm gonna put the eighth. Does it save it as the eighth? No, it saves it as seven. The date selected for the due date should be the date saved and displayed on the entry on the main screen. And also, let's check the database here. So we pick the eighth. I'm just going to do a refresh. And we can see that it is persisting the eighth here. So I think it's just to do with how it's being displayed here. So it's, and you can see it's telling us what's wrong. Current issues are we're setting UTC hours, which is causing the date shift. If you're non technical, this is just going to be gibberish. But for folks like me who, actually do build these types of apps, we're going to be able to see if what it's doing is correct. And of course, we can always go in and edit the code as well, which if you click this over here, this file explorer, you can see everything that's been generated. Close this up. Look at that. There we go. It's fixed now, March 8th. Let's go in and edit this one, change it. We'll just do March 10th, save, March 10th. All right, so with that, we've created a relatively simple app with Replit. Now, the great part about it is, is that we could continue to iterate and build this out and end up with a functional and really valuable application. Now, if you have other AI coding tools that you think I should try out, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for further AI agent coding and growth content that I have coming your way very shortly. Until next time, happy coding.